Today's the day that we've been looking forward to for years, when we get to show you just some of the games that demonstrate our belief that PlayStation 5 mocks the biggest generational transition our industry has yet seen. What's up everybody, welcome back. Now, I've never been the type of YouTuber that thinks that every piece of information needs a video unless I'm very interested in covering it. So basically, now that the majority of some of the recent PlayStation 5 news and The Last of Us 2 news and the controversy surrounding it is pretty much covered by pretty much, you know, basically every YouTuber on planet Earth, we can get into some of the more updated information on Metroid Prime 4 from Red Show Studios. Now, if you haven't checked out the Metroid Prime 4 podcast I was on recently with Rob from Rule 2 Review and Joey Ferris from Ferris Rule Pro, I highly suggest you check it out for an over an hour long discussion on everything we want from the game, including stuff on the story, combat, and the graphics in Metroid Prime 4. And I'll leave a link to that in the description. So, Retro Studios has even more updates on what they're hiring for in Metroid Prime 4. And it's getting really interesting now because it appears to be answering some of the questions that we brought up in that Metroid Prime 4 podcast, specifically about the story and how it might be handled. One of the questions we had was if Retro Studios is going to follow more of a Metroid Prime 1 type of storytelling, or was it going to be somewhat of an evolution from what they did with Metroid Prime 3 Corruption? Well, from the looks of what they are working on, this may in fact be the biggest Metroid Prime story yet. Now granted, personally I would actually prefer a more isolated story that perhaps goes back to Metroid Prime 1, and how the story was told through discovery and lore, and simply discovering the world, for example, but if they did decide to go to a more epic story, I wouldn't be opposed to it as long as it did feel like a Metroid Prime game. And another thing we have to keep in mind as well is that while all these things that we go over may in fact lead to a bigger story with voice acting, cutscenes, and a bigger narrative, it doesn't actually mean that the actual gameplay itself will not be in isolation in large portions. I think Retro Studios is very aware that atmosphere is the king in Metroid Prime games, so I wouldn't necessarily expect cutscenes and dialogue around every corner like some of the more recent games like Final Fantasy VII Remake and The Last of Us Part II, which they employ quite greatly in those games. So with that, let's go over what Retro Studios is asking for here, and after that we'll discuss also their new lighting engine and graphics they're working on there as well, which is also really interesting information to pay attention to. So, first of all, with the story, this is for a contract, I repeat, contract writer position. And we'll go over some of the job duties they require. It says, work with the narrative team to quickly create dialogue, cinematic scripts, and foundational story documents. Help write in-game backstory, world building, general lore, and character breakdowns. Help to maintain narrative foundations established by the narrative team. Perform editing and tracking of in-game dialogue, narrative bibles, and cinematics. Work with the design team to craft memorable gameplay-centric story moments. Work with the various teams to ensure that the game and narrative is implemented as intended. And assist cinematic and design teams with identifying suitable moments for cutscenes. So this is a time-limited job, and Retro Studios points out very clearly that they want this job to be something for them to help quickly get done with the team. The reason why I want to make this clear continually going forward with contract positions like this is because normally these positions are already filled by Retro Studios and they're adding more people to their team because they need more help because they want to get these things done faster. And it even says this in the job duties themselves that they want to have the work being done quickly to create dialogue and cinematic scripts and foundational story documents for the story of this game. And from these elements that they're hiring for, it looks like we can actually get an idea 
that this game will in fact have quite a bit of lore and backstory in gameplay itself. It even says editing and tracking of in-game dialogue. So whether that means actual scripts from the characters themselves that are speaking to you or actually having to read the information like how you do with scanning in Metroid Prime 1, 2, and 3, scanning was a huge part of those games. And quite obviously, this is a Metroid Prime game, so probably we'll be doing some scanning in this game as well. However, I wouldn't be opposed, as we talked about in that Metroid Prime 4 podcast, that actually having in-game dialogue from a you know computer voice or AI voice actually talk to you, you don't actually have to read it all yourself, but actually have the in-game dialogue itself from a voice narrated from this information you're scanning, perhaps, or some of the lore that you find in the game. I think that would actually help your overall narrative and story of this game, because a lot of times people who play these games they simply do not want to read lines and lines and lines of text. They just want to get to the next part of the game. So if they actually are recording voiceovers for the actual dialogue for the lore and things like that, and the narrative Bibles it says, basically you would have all the story being told to you and you can listen to it instead of actually having to read it all. Granted, reading is not a problem. You can make up your own voices in your mind, but after a while when you're playing a possibly 25 to 30 hour game, reading may in fact get tiresome and boring to some people playing this game for the first time because remember a lot of people have never played a Metroid Prime game before they may be jumping into this Metroid Prime game for the first time and quite frankly technology and the way games are made has advanced quite a bit since 2007 when Metroid Prime 3 was released on the Nintendo Wii so gamers expectations have changed a lot so in-game dialogue and audio for the actual lore and the general things that you find the text that you find and read in the story may actually be read to you by an actor this time. We'll have to wait and see. But it looks like this game, of course, will have some type of in-game dialogue that you will either be reading or either hearing while you play the game. And it's really interesting because it looks like it's going to have quite a bit of cinematics and gameplay-centric story elements, of course. When you fight a boss or go to a new area, there's going to be cutscenes there. So these are going to be very story-centric elements to the game. And the narrative is going to be very important to telling the story. And I brought out it's even going to have narrative Bibles. So this may have quite a bit of encyclopedia type of information, data and lore to scan and to find throughout the game. And who knows, some of these things you actually come across may actually help you in your journey. And not only that, but unlock other things for you. Because a lot of games do that these days is that when you actually find more information and collect all the things regarding that information actually unlocks more things for you not just having the information there for you to read. So that could be something key to Metroid Prime 4 as well for the story and the upgradable elements to the game for your suit and for your weapons and for the overall experience that you enjoy in Metroid Prime 4. The reason why I think this game has a very good opportunity to have the biggest story of any Metroid Prime game is because of all these things they're adding to the game. And if they do happen to add voiceover AI or whatever that reads these things to you when you're playing, they could actually fit in a lot more story because then they know the player is going to be seeing and hearing these things as well during the game, which would also further make sure that this information is as interesting and as deep as possible for you to enjoy. This is something I actually wish they did in Doom Eternal because Doom Eternal, believe it or not, has a very big story all in its data lore that it has and it's all just text that you have to read. So hopefully it's not all just text in Metroid Prime 4, but actually has some voice dialogue to read some of the story for you along with the cinematics. And the cinematics look like it's gonna be a bigger part in this game as well compared to other Metroid Prime games. And now getting on to the graphics part of it again, there's another update, this time for the lighting of Metroid Prime 4. And this is very exciting, because if you remember Metroid Prime 3, Retro Studios made it a priority to make lighting a very big aspect of Metroid Prime in general. And especially on the Wii, when they added the bloom lighting and various things with the real-time lighting effects that they were doing and the particle effects and it all made for a very nice flowing lighting system that looked really good and matched the art style of the game. So what can you expect from Metro Prime 4 and its lighting department? Well it looks like they're going to be doing the state-of-the-art things yet again like we've been talking about. They're doing all the good stuff here. So let's take a look at what they're doing with the lighting system in Metroid Prime 4. And this is for a level 4 lighting artist. So here are some of the things they are looking for. It talks about creates mood, as we know, atmosphere, right? Creates mood through lighting of levels and cinematics that is consistent with art direction and gameplay needs. 
establishes strong color palettes, value structures, and compositions through lighting. Adjusts post effects, that's post processing, for a level including exposure, color grading, fog, bloom. So even right there, we know this game is going to be glowing when you look at it. It's going to look beautiful. I just know it. And communicates with level art and design to ensure lighting is achieving art and gameplay goals. Looks like they're going to be implementing some type of lighting into the actual gameplay itself as well here. Gameplay goals. We will have to wait and see about that, of course. Then it says, work with engineers and tech art to improve tools and workflows. Maintain visual continuity and performance throughout the game. So those are just some of the job duties. We're not going to go over all of them, but it also talks about how this individual may actually be doing other job duties as well not just those things they mentioned there because maybe some of the things they're doing that they say in the job description may actually give away too much about Metroid Prime 4 that they don't want to be known about just yet simply by saying what they're going to be working on could actually be a spoiler for the game we don't know and if we look at the summary of requirements yet again this hints at Metroid Prime 4 as being something high tech the latest and greatest from these developers with the best types of programs that they're using for this game with Metro Studios as we talked about in the Metroid Prime 4 podcast that we had with Rob and Joey, this, in fact, is most likely going to be a cross-generation game that will be running on brand new Switch hardware when it's finally released. And, of course, this information fits perfectly with that and lines up with that very well because of what they're actually working on with the lighting system. So I'm going to list them here, but we're just going to go over a few of them. And it brings up yet again a solid understanding of PBR, physically based rendering, and the interaction between materials and lighting. That's very important. So physically based rendering, how things are manipulated in the real world and rendered in the game is what they're working on here with lighting and materials. So how light shines and reflects off objects and your clothes or off an enemy or off an object. These are things they're implementing actually with physically based rendering, which is exciting because maybe you, you melt something or you freeze something with ice and how the actual light reflects off that object is going to be interacting in the physical world in the game itself with physically based rendering on the materials. That's something that the Switch hasn't done that I have noticed. They haven't had something quite at that level. That's something more of a PS4 and beyond type of thing that they're doing. Then it goes on to say, understanding of real world lighting values and exposure and how they affect an image. Experience using a real time lighting engine like Unreal unity and frostbite and keep in mind this level 4 lighting artist is going to be doing things for real-time lighting and in-game cinematics as well and it says here at the last part they need to have experience using an industry standard renderer like arnold renderman v-ray octane mitsuba and others now you may be wondering what each of those programs do but basically each of those are used for things with cinematics and even some real-time gameplay for ray tracing. Each of those things are used for that in different aspects and different ways. Now I'm not saying this confirms that this game is going to be having ray tracing in it, but since they are describing before that interaction between materials and lighting with physically based rendering and then using programs like V-Ray, which is doing ray tracing on cinematics and even in some real-time games, all these tools are talking about could in fact be used in implementing some type of ray tracing effect or real-time lighting effect that looks close to ray tracing, for example, in Metroid Prime 4. Because we know ray tracing is the big buzzword, and if this game is coming out on new hardware as well as a cross-gen game, say in 2022, using some type of ray tracing from Metro Studios may actually be possible for them to do at some point in some type of customized way. We don't know that, but the fact is these programs are actually used to implement ray tracing in games and in cinematics. V-Ray, Octane, Renderman, and Arnold. They all do different types of real-time lighting, including ray tracing. So it's very interesting to see that there, that they actually want to have this developer have these abilities in their portfolio to implement in Metroid Prime 4. So that's all I want to go over in this video for Metroid Prime 4, and it's very exciting stuff. I've been sitting on it for a little bit because it didn't seem like the right time to share it just yet. Due to all the information going on with PlayStation 5 and all the crazy news about that, next-generation consoles, Nintendo has been very quiet, and I think this is a good time to actually share this video with you guys. It's been a little bit on the channel, so hope you did enjoy this video, guys. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section, and look forward to more information on Metroid Prime 4 in the future. Obviously, this year, most likely, I think we'll be having more information to share. It's a continual process, and the more information we get, the more exciting it gets. As you can see here, now we got story information we can go by and lighting effect information for the game as well. Really exciting stuff. Alright guys, if you did enjoy this video, please hit the like button, subscribe for more, and I'll talk to you very soon in the next video. Have a great day.